I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to go through each component of the pumping test setup and I'm going to explain how it works and why we're using it and exactly what measurements we need to take um, to undertake our pumping test properly. So if I come over here, you can see that we have underneath my feet right now, we've got a borehole, which is this blue pipe circle around here. And inside the borehole at the moment, there is a suction pump. So this borehole is not too deep. It's what we call a shallow borehole, and it's about eight or nine meters deep. While we're undertaking our pumping test, one of the most important things that we need to do is measure the water level inside the borehole. And this is done with this thing here, which is called a dip meter. So it's called a dip meter or a dipper, and it's lowered down into the borehole while we're doing our pumping test. And it can be used to uh, measure the water level in reference to the top of the casing of the borehole or the ground level. So you'll see here, it's basically a metal probe on the bottom of a graded um, tape line here. And when this part of the dip meter touches the water, it will make a sound. And then the light here will come on and we'll know that that's the depth that the water is sitting at. So if I lower this down into the borehole now, you can see that when I hit the water, there'll be a small noise and the light will come on. So do you see that there? When I lower this down, we've got a water level measurement. So I can see on here on the tape that that is at two meters and 48 centimeters. So the water level inside this borehole is two meters and 48 centimeters below our reference point. And for this test, our reference point is the top of the casing on the borehole, which coincidentally is almost exactly at ground level as well. You can see here this green pipe is coming out of the borehole and this is our suction pipe for our pump. So the big unit that you can see here is our pumping unit, which is the power supply and a suction pump in one. So that's basically a small generator which will be used to power this pump here. So it's really important with this type of suction pump that we make sure that we fully prime it before we start to use it. So we need to make sure that the chamber here and the pipeline um, coming up from the borehole is full of water so it can be started properly. And also before a test starts, we need to make sure that we've got enough fuel to power the pump for the time that we're expecting to be pumping. On the pump, we've got a steel pipe here which is coming through, which is about a meter, a meter and a half long. And it's really important to make sure when you're doing a pumping test setup, that before out, coming out of the pump and before each device that we have in the line, we need to have one meter. And this is because water coming out of here could be potentially quite turbulent and it needs a bit of time to settle down and make sure that it's, um, it's laminar flow before we get to our flow meter. So this here is a flow meter, which is used to measure the um, discharge rate in real time. So our water will come through here, and as it passes through the flow meter, it turns a small turbine, which in turn will um, adjust our totalizer clock here. So what we have is we have a total number of meters cubed that have been pumped by this flow, me uh, by this flow meter. And then we've also got decimal points of meters cubed. So the water will go through there. It will go into another meter pipe which is again used to avoid uh, turbulent flow close to the, to the flow meter. And it will come up here to our valve. So we've got a valve attached to the line here, which can be operated by moving this up and down. And that will be used during the pumping test to restrict the flow. So during any pumping test, we'll want to be able to restrict the flow to exactly the rate that we want, especially when we're doing some sort of step test where we need to use different pumping rates. From the valve there, the water goes down, 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 and it goes into the background there to our discharge point. Here we are at the discharge point of our pumping test. So the water that we're pumping out of the borehole over there with our pump is coming through the discharge line, and this is where it's actually uh, coming out at the end of the pipe. So we've chosen a place that's approximately 50 meters away from the borehole to discharge the water. And we do that for a few different reasons. Firstly, it always needs to be a certain distance, at least 50 meters, maybe 100 meters from the borehole to prevent the water that we're discharging here 
going back, infiltrating into the ground and coming back into our borehole, which we'd call recirculation. So we need to make sure we have a distance between the discharge and the pump for that reason. And secondly, also, it's really important to make sure that you don't flood your work area or if you're doing a pumping test in a very flat area, it's quite common to uh, have problems to discharge the water to the environment in a place that's not going to flood somebody's house or somebody's uh, work area or even flood your own pumping test equipment. So sometimes if you're doing a pumping test for two or three days, you're going to have a huge, huge volume of water and you need to make sure that goes away from the borehole. Here we found the ideal position because we're actually discharging into a small ditch and the water can flow away quite quickly. So um, at the moment it's coming out at about one litre per second uh, during our step test. And the other important thing to note when you're discharging pumping test water to the environment is to make sure that you comply with all local discharge and water quality regulations. So you don't want to be discharging potentially silty or water of unknown quality to a public stream or a, um, or a ditch near somebody's house. So that's a really important thing to take into consideration. Mm -hmm.